DIY Crafts. Here is your host, Lexi Hansen, with your craft this week. Hi, and welcome to DIY Crafts. I'm obviously your host, Lexi Hansen, and we're going to be making bean bags, which they actually double as a lot of different things. You can use them as hand warmers in the winter, and you can use them for bean bag toss or even uh, tic tac toe for uh, the kids. It's a really easy project to do, and it's really easy to make, so kids can do it too. Um, obviously, you want to have parental vision since they have to use needles and scissors and things like that, but it's really easy for kids to do, and they kind of look like this. They're just little bean bags, and you can make them in one or two colors, five colors, whatever you want to do. Um, but you just kind of cut out the shape that you want. Um, I like squares because they're really easy to sew. So I cut squares out like this. And uh, you just pick the fabrics that you want. I like these colors. I like blacks and, and greens, so I kind of just pick those colors. And you just do this. You just fold them in half like this and kind of just get a little bit of a crease right here on the edges right here. That way, when you open it up, you can kind of see that crease in here. And then you just, like, cut it down the crease. And yes, I'm using kid scissors because people don't trust me to use regular scissors because I cut myself way too often. So yes, I'm using kid scissors. So then you get two triangles like this for that color. And then you do the same thing on this one. And pretty much I'm just winging this at this point, but it's the same basic principle. You fold it and get the crease. So then you have four triangles. That'll make each side of your bean bag. So you have these two triangles and these two triangles. And to, when you uh, are putting them together, you, uh, you kind of, you put this one face down, and then you put this one, the pattern side, you want to put on top of that pattern so that both sides are the backs of the fabrics. And so you put it like that, and then you're, you have to sew a little crease down right here, right on this side right there. And so I always like to pin things just to make sure it stays the same way, and I just have little sewing pins. You just put them in here so that it holds it where it's supposed to be. And, you know, I usually use about three of them because it's easier that way. So when it's pinned, it'll look like that. So it'll just hold it there so you can sew right down there, right above the pins. And you won't have to worry about it, you know, falling apart while you're in the middle of sewing it. So once you start sewing it, there's, you can sew it, I like to hand sew it, but you can also sew it on your sewing machine if you like doing that. I personally just like hand sewing because it's easier and more relaxing. But once you're done, it should look something like that. And uh, then you just open it up and fold it over and it's a square. It's going to look like that. So that's one side of your bean bag. And I already took the liberty of doing both sides just because it's easier. And so once you do that, you're going to have the two sides like this. And you want, I always like to make them kind of correlate this way so that you, when you turn it over, the purple is on the opposite side and the black's on the opposite side, so it's not matching back and forth. But I like to do that more than anything else and makes it look cool. So you put them like this. You want to make sure that they're back to back like this so that you see the creases in the middles because you're actually going to turn it inside out when you're done sewing it up. But you're going to start here, and like I said again, you're going to put the pins in it so it holds it all together. And that's really an easy part. You just kind of place them anywhere where it's going to hold it together like that. And we're going to put, I don't know, I don't really have a lot of pins, but you just keep doing this, and when we come back, we'll uh, show you how to do the other stuff. Well, hello. I know, this is surprising, a talking dog. Ever since getting the dog translator, it's nice to know what she has to say. I also enjoy speaking to my owner and letting him know what I really need, instead of him looking confused at me. The talking dog caller speaks in a language that you can understand, and translates your words into a language your dog can understand. The dog translator is a necessary gadget. For Hi, and welcome back. 
we uh, finished with our pinning the pieces together, so that's the easy part, really. Um, when you go to sew this, if you're going to hand sew it, I recommend you get um, some kind of hand quilting thread. It's a little thicker. It's kind of, it, it holds together better, doesn't break as easy, and um, it says on here hand quilting, so you'll know that it's a different kind than just regular thread. Um, you want to get a needle. I have one here that I like that's long and it's easy to use, so I usually use something like that just because I like long needles, but you can buy packs like this that are, you know, 50, 45 different needles, and uh, they all come in all sizes, all thicknesses, and these are about $4, so they're pretty cheap. And um, you just buy those at Walmart or any hobby store, really. And uh, to start off sewing, you're going to take a piece of string, probably about your arm's length, you know, just guess, it doesn't really matter, and you just cut it down, and then you're literally going to take this string and thread one side through the needle and match it up to the other side. That way it kind of makes a big loop on the needle, which is kind of weird because normally that's not how you sew, but it's easier to do it this way and it keeps your fabrics together. And you just make a knot. I always like to tie a couple knots, so instead of just looping it under once, I actually loop it under like four times. So. I do that and then just tie it tight so it has a knot in it that keeps it, you know, like a knot so it doesn't keep things falling out. So you have your string with a knot on the end, your needles on the other end, and you just start wherever you want on the here and just start here, pull it out. I use a special stitch that I learned um, that is really easy to do. You just, when you go in, you're going to come out like right here where it's a little bit, like probably half an inch away from the one where you went in, pull it out and then go back through right next to the hole that you made the first time. So it's just kind of like making big circles in the fabric with the needle and the thread. And it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of, you go about a half an inch down and then you come back to the same hole that you made earlier put it through and pull it again so it makes a straight line. And this is something that's really, you know, kind of easy to do, something that a kid could do easily. And uh, the only thing you have to worry about is the needle being sharp enough to poke them. So, you know, have your kids wear either a thimble or, you know, teach them how to sew to where they're not going to hurt their hands. And uh, you just keep kind of doing that until the whole thing is, uh, you know, sewn together. And once it is, it'll be kind of like a pouch. And you'll leave about, when you get to the top, you're going to sew all around here. When you get back up here to where you started, you're going to want to leave like about an inch and a half, maybe two inches, unsewn. Because that's how you're going to turn it inside out. So when you leave it unsewn, you're just going to flip it inside out. It's really easy to do. And it might take a little practice, because I know it took me a while. But you flip it inside out. I like to use like a pen or something to just kind of push the corners out so it actually stays square. But um, you can pretty much, you know, do whatever you want with that. And uh, once you flip it inside out, you're going to get ready to fill it. And that's the hardest part and the dirtiest part, uh, which it's even not that dirty. So you need a measuring cup for that. I always like to put about a cup in like a size like this. It just makes it easier. Um, and it's kind of makes it more not as floppy. This one has about a little le more than half a cup and so there's some space in it and it's just not as pretty as having a whole cup in there. So it kind of makes it pretty that way. And then you need rice. Rice is really easy to find. It's really cheap. It's like $4 for a huge bag of it. And you just pour it into your measuring cup and then you need a funnel obviously to get it into the bag. but um, you know, any kitchen funnel will do. You just pour it in there and sew that spot up and you're pretty much done and you're on your way to getting on these. So you can use this as a kid for a rainy day. See you later.